Hi, Mr. Chairman. It's Aussie Villain. Yeah, no thanks, mate. Yeah, it was a very good performance against Napoli. I was uh, very pleased with it. But uh, we still focus on getting out of the group. And there's a lot of hard work to do just yet. Uh, but I did want to speak to you actually about the Napoli game because I thought it was a real shame that that took place in Wrexham. Yeah, well, you know, there is kind of something we could do about it. We, uh, we do have £80 million in the bank. And I was thinking maybe it would be a nice tribute to me uh, if we could build the Aussie Villain Arena here in Bala and then we could host our own European games. No? What do you mean, no? After all I've done for this club and you still won't build me a stadium. Oh, wait till the Iron Brew gods hear about this. There will be a curse coming your way, sir. Hi guys, I'm Aussie Villain. Welcome to Season 13, Episode 5 of The Impossible Dream with Violet Town. And today we have an Iron Brew round, uh, fourth round game, I think it is, against Dundee of the Scottish Championship. And then it's off to Arsenal in the Champions League group stages. We are two from two after yesterday's stunning win against Napoli. Could we dream of 3 for 3 and taking a Premier League scalp? will be the first time we've done that. Um, even if we get close, it'll be the first time we've gotten close, to be honest. But surely, oh, we're playing well. Uh, now, as you've just seen, I did ask the board about um, about expanding our stadium or getting a new stadium. I really want the Aussie Villain Arena. Um, but this board, it, they say no to everything now. And, I mean, it's we've, we're sort of in a good spot in that sort of all the facilities and the, and the youth uh, stuff is all upgraded. But apart from the fact I really want to be able to host our own European games, I do think something that's holding us back massively in terms of uh, finances is we only have basic basic corporate facilities. So even if we could just expand uh, Mayor's Tegrid, I'm not quite sure exactly how you pronounce that. That'll be shocking, won't it? Um, even if we could just expand that to get better corporate facilities, I do think it would help us bring in more sponsorship money. Um, and the thing is that whilst we do have a, a really good financial situation, I think what's holding us back a little bit in terms of wages is that we are almost 100% reliant on um, on European money. So I think if we can get a if we could get a bigger stadium with more income from from gate sales, with more income from sponsorship, then we might be able to get a bigger wage budget. That being said, we can't spend the wage budget we have. We're only at halfway. Um, so, you know, it's not, maybe it doesn't make that big of a difference, but I really, I just really want to be able to host our own European games, basically. That's, um, that's the main thing. But anyway, anyway, we have three games to catch you up on since last episode. You may have just got a sneaky look at the, <laughs> at the results there as I clicked around by accident. Uh, first up was a game against Afen Lido. We took an early lead when Curtis Owen played in Damian Ormar. Ben Evans missed a penalty before Ken Bookley secured the points. So it was a comfortable win this one, all Mark and Bookley with the goals, Ben Evans missed a penalty, you can see there, we, we, it was a typical game, we dominated, uh, probably should have won by more, Curtis Owen, he's come back in, I mean, it does make you wonder why we're getting rid of him, we just, we have too many midfielders basically, so his transfer value is going back up, um, we'll play him a little bit till January and hopefully we'll be able to get him out in January for a nice fee, uh, but yeah, good win there, next up we played Barry Town. Lewis James was on hand to put us in an early lead. Barrytown pulled level before half-time, before Dan Robson's cross was headed in by Ormark to restore our lead. But Barrytown snatched a point late on. So dropped points. Um, maybe a little bit, well, very surprising, actually. Uh, this was just a strange game, and we just seemed to really, really struggle. And I don't really understand why. I don't know if I got, I mean, I must have got a team talk wrong or something. Uh, but they just looked a little bit nervous and anxious throughout it, disinterested. Um, it wasn't the strongest team, perhaps, but, you know, Sam Evans played in midfield, didn't do a good job. But, of course, he's part of the penis initiative, and I do want him to improve. And he's technically got some good, you know, some good basic skills there for a midfielder. Um, you know, with vision technique, passing, whatnot, flair, long shots, first touch, dribbling. He should be he should be decent, but he just didn't have a good game. We did give a debut to one of the youngsters in this one, Dion Rickards. Um he didn't, I mean, he's fine. He, I don't think he's ever going to come off, to be honest. But yeah, we just struggled. So drop points for the second time this season now in the league, uh, which is disappointing. The final game to catch you up on was against the students, Cardiff Met Uni. Matteo Freshi put us in front. Norrington Davies crossed the Marcus Wade to double our lead. And Freshi made it 3-0 at half time. Before Foman crossed for Wade to get his second to make it four. 
So a good performance this one, a bit of a return to form. Uh, it was a strongish team because I wanted to give uh, a little bit of game time to some of the European players who hadn't played in a little while. So that's why we see the likes of Freshie who got two goals coming in for this one. Uh, Marcus Wade, of course, got a double as well. Will Williamson played in midfield as an attacking midfielder. Um, Tony got a game at the back. So it was a strongish team as well. So we, we should have won well. Um, and yeah, Askew got a game in goal and did did okay as well. Another one, I'm just giving you a little bit of game time, see if we can sell him on for a little bit of a profit as well. Uh, so that is what happened since last episode. Quick update of the league table. We're flying five points clear, a game in hand on Kef and Jewers. The new Saints down there in sixth. Are we starting to just slowly, slowly wither them away into a nothing team? Um, let's hope so. And uh, you can see there, Champions League group, massive game coming up against Arsenal. How this is, it's just dreamland, isn't it? The, how this has gone so far. And of course, to start with, we host Dundee in the Iron Brew fourth round. Let's have a quick look at what we're doing here. We are the favourites for this one. Um, they are in decent form or fair form. Uh, won, having won their last two games. Carlos Pinto is their manager, a Portuguese manager. Good manager, average coach, I'd say. He's been around Scottish football for a little while now. Uh, just under a year at Dundee FC, not Dundee United. Uh, they are attacking standard style of play. We're expecting them to come out in something along the lines of this formation. They are currently sitting third in the Scottish Championship in behind Ross County and Queen of the South. Now, we did beat Ross County last round. Um... So that is possibly promising signs for us. Our positional heat map, we can see there may be a little bit narrow defensively. They do like to attack, particularly down this one, uh, the right-hand side, left-hand side for them, right-hand side for us maybe. Passing network is there, key passes as well. And this is the team we're sending out. Obviously, again, favoring the uh, the European game. We're going to give Soltani a game in goal for this one. Just try and make sure he's really, really raring to go for the Champions League. Norrington Davies, KDH, Ben Evans, and No Star at the back four. It's York and Yamaguchi in midfield. It's Wade, Dixon, and Fomin with Allmark up top. Let's go. So everybody is lining up as expected, which, uh, as I always say, is a nice thing. Gomez says we should go out there and prove a point today. Uh, just keep the run going, boys. Just keep it going. Some calm, we have faith. And, yeah, hopefully another win in the Iron Brew. We know it's always tough for us in this, for whatever reason. I think it was Groundhopper that said last uh, comments last episode, only this Barla Town team could struggle past Notts County and then put five past Napoli. <laughs> it's so true. We're just, we're a, we're a funny club sometimes. I don't fully understand why we do what we do, but uh, here we are. A bit of a knock there for Fomin, it looks like. Hopefully nothing too serious. Um, let's give it a demand more. And see what uh, what that does for us. I do think maybe a little bit of the problem in the Iron Brew particularly is uh, it suffered a tight groin. All right, well let's not let's not do that. Let's get uh, Davis on. Fomin is someone that could obviously be useful for us now. Potentially having already picked up that knock, he might actually be out of that Arsenal game anyway, uh, which would be a little bit of a blow. I'm not, I haven't decided yet. I have to see exactly what we're expecting from them if we want to go with wingers or not. I think we might just stay with the way we've been playing. There's a penalty as Sean Davis comes on and uh, makes an instant impact. Well done to you, sir. Now, who's going to take it? Is it Ben Evans? We have seen him miss one. I think he does. Oh, it's Nosta. Haven't seen him take a penalty before. Mark Nosta gets his first Barla Town goal. Wonderful stuff. 1-0. We'll give it a demand more here. I have noticed if, uh, if I tell them to concentrate, they tend to go and concede a goal, so I'm just steering clear of that for now. But uh, Mark Nosta with a first goal, the young Dutch right back. I have relatively high hopes for him. Uh, a good defensive player. We just need him to kick on a little bit more, get it sort of crossing and dribbling. Um, but he's looking as though he might turn into a very, very useful player for us, especially in Europe, because um, he's good in the air as well. Here we go with Marcus Wade coming forward. Can he get a crossing? All Mark should be lurking. Wade, it's another penalty, is it? That maybe looks just ever so slightly harsh. It's no to the take it again. Can he get himself a double? Hasn't scored a goal all season. Is he going to get two in a game for Baylor Town? Mark Nosta goes the other side. Same result, 2-0. And, well, that should be that. That should be that. Maybe I have successfully diverted the uh, Iron Brew God's curse towards our chairman for not letting me expand the stadium or giving me a new stadium. If anybody has any ideas of what I can do, what I can say, I pretty much tried all the options to try and get them to expand uh, or get a new one. Um, the problem we have is that we're not selling out. Um, so, well, it's the Saints anyway. I'm, I'm looking to sell out to the corporate facilities. <laughs> but yeah, so it's, it, it's, a, it's a difficult argument to make. 
Um, I really wish there was an option that, you know, that just to say, you know, I'd like to be able to host their own European games. Because that seems like a legitimate reason, to me anyway, to want a new stadium. There's Stavis, he's offside. Oh, that's silly. Silly, silly stuff. Looking back across uh, the defensive line, and he looked well offside. Oh, actually, no. It's very, very tight. He's in line with the ball, maybe, and that was what allowed him to get in behind the defenders there. Um, is that another? Oh, no, they've got away with that one, but it's cleared, picked up there by Nostup. Here we go with Wade. He goes on the outside of his man again. Can he get across in this time? Marcus Wade have another go. Sean Davis, this time he stays on side. This time he buries it. It's 3-0 in first half stoppage time, and that should be that. Wade and Davis running the show for us in wide areas. And, I mean, it's a shame Walmart couldn't get a goal. He's doing his best. He's keeping a defender interested there. And Sean Davis, I tell you what, that's not the easiest header. Very narrow angle there. And he's done well. A third goal. He's... he's just a quiet achiever for us, Sean Davis, isn't he? He just pops up every season, gets himself his goals, gets himself his assists. And he, to be honest, he never gives me a problem. He never says he wants to play more. He's never asked for more money. Um, he is just, he's just a dream. He's a manager's dream, to be honest. He's a really, really useful player for us. Uh, and he's not good enough for, for Europe necessarily. What he is, though, is he does have a lot of pace about him, which makes him dangerous. So he's always, even if we did need to use him in Europe, he's going to have that threat just because he does have that pace. Let's give him some praise. Um, so that's, you know, that's always going to be a useful thing. Yamaguchi uh, back there for Nosta. Here goes the cross. Davis is there again. It's down for Dixon. Dixon's header is absolutely woefully over the bar. Um, that's one from the Aussie Villain Classics collection, that header. Um, all right, let's maybe make some changes here. I feel relatively confident this game is done. So let's get Ormark off. Let's get Burgess on. He's a useful striker for us. Um, so we'll get him on for some match sharpness. Nobody else needs match sharpness necessarily. So we'll leave it at that for now. We do have Denny Garmi on the bench. Um, he could be one that's worth bringing on. But again, he's a player that we'd always pick Yamaguchi over him. But he's someone that is potentially useful in Europe because he does have some really good high attributes, even though sort of overall he's not particularly good enough for Europe. So um, I wonder if we should actually maybe take Yamaguchi off, save his legs in case we do need him in Europe. Uh, the reason he's playing here is because I don't think he's going to start against Arsenal and he did need a little bit of match sharpness. So let's actually do that. I've talked myself into that. Denny Gami for Yamaguchi. Um Update on, De on Denny Gami, you can see there. Good free kick taker, good passing, good flair and vision. Uh, a very good player, actually. Half a million he's worth now. So, again, another one that's um, come in under the penis initiative. So, if we were to sell him on, I want to say kind of Ford is where we picked him up from. Um, so, they would get, uh, you know, they're in for a nice little windfall there as well. And he's, he's coming along to the point where, you know, there, there might be some interest in him. And to be honest, I wouldn't mind selling him just because if we were to sell him, that would then open up more playing time for Sam Evans, who could then sort of do something similar. Here we go with Burgess. Not quite there. Blocked. It's blocked away again. And Dundee clinging on desperately here, but they are still... Uh, well, they're going out, aren't they? We're into the next round. That will be quarterfinals. This, this was a fourth round, not a quarterfinal, I think, wasn't it? I forget who it is. The draw's already taken place. This was a game that was postponed because of the international fixture. There's a good ball for Burgess. Oh, he's not been able to find the back of the net unlucky there for the youngster uh but yeah because this is postponed from the international game we do have our draw for the next round i can't remember who it is to, to save myself but uh, we'll have a look in just a second here we'll have to say don't let that performance go to your heads boys but i'm um, pretty happy with that so iron brew cup fourth round victory uh excellent excellent stuff and we are against cove rangers of scottish league two at home in a quarterfinal you would certainly like to think we could win that uh, that was a really good performance from uh, from uh, no star, even though penalties. Is he a good penalty taker? We're about to find out. Um, penalty taker? No, he's not. Surely we've got someone better than that. But you can see what I mean. He really is coming along nicely. Uh, worth 1.1 million now. What are we signing for? Eight hundred. Oh, so we signed him for a bit of a fee as well. Anyway, we have Arsenal up next, guys. Wait right there. We'll be back for that. Off to the Emirates we go. Could we do it? I'm Chaz Hogan, Australian journalist here at the Emirates Stadium in London as Aussie villains Barla Express roll into town to take on Arsenal in the Champions League group stage. The Welsh side have more confidence in a dingo with two dicks after their dismantling of Napoli 
and we'll be hoping for something similar here tonight. Okay, welcome back, welcome back. Now, not a good start to things here because the under-19s have been beaten by Arsenal. Now, they've won their first two games and obviously so have we. Is this a sort of a sign of things to come? Let's hope not. 4-2, uh, we did go down to 10 men late on it. I think the game was already done at that point. It actually was 1-1 after the, we went down to 10 men. Uh, two goals for uh, Magelli, who looks quite good. Um... Are we able to? Have I already scouting him? I am already scouting him. Uh, so there we go. That is not ideal, but still in a decent position uh, to get out of that group, you would say. Um, and of course, they'll have, to, they'll have to play Arsenal in Wales to come as well. But let's have a look at what we're doing here against Arsenal. We are in London. It is We're in excellent form. We're not the favourites, but we're not the biggest outsiders, you'd have to say as well. They are a Sergio Concesal coached team. Good manager average-ish coach, uh, adventurous direct playing style. Now, our scouts say they're coming out in 4-4-2. History would say that they're not. They're going to come out like this. So that puts me in a little bit of a difficult position as to exactly how to <laughs> how to approach this game. They did beat uh, that blue mob from Birmingham. Um, see, that they're a little bit narrow, which really, really tempts me to go and play with wingers. But we've seen our, sort of our typical European formation uh just been working for us so we're gonna stick with it uh but i do have fomine and bono on the bench if we do need to make changes now of course a reminder that big mac is injured he's not available so that's marcus wade on the bench for this one so i mean he's not a bad striker but he's not really what you want coming on against arsenal if you need a goal but it's sultani in goal it's tone it's Gurke and one me they've been imperious for us so far so they continue ballerini uh, Ballerini, as we've uh, decided he's going to be rechristened. It was uh, Gordon, I think, in the comments that pointed that out. Obviously, it's Ballerini. Uh, and Montgomery down the left. It's Brewerton, the Armenian, and Quinn in midfield. It's Williamson coming in for Big Mac. He partners Freshy up top. Oh, let's we'll see what we can do against the Gunners. So they have come out 4-4-2. Uh, so credit to the scouts. They got that one right, but it does make it increasingly difficult to know how to set up against them. Um... So we'll just have to sort of see how we get on here. Uh, Gomez says we should challenge them to go out there, prove a point. Um, pick up where you left off. No one expects us, no pressure on you. We've been playing well. Just play your natural game. Let's try that. Some calm, we have faith. Oh, I'm so nervous about this. Now, of course, Tommy Williamson, we did sign from Arsenal. So he's up against his former club. Hopefully he wants to show them what they're missing out on. Um... I would take a point right now in this one. This would It would be a massive point if we could get it. We've got a free kick to defend here. Ball in. Can we get it away? It's off the crossbar and over. Um, yeah, it's one of these, isn't it? I, I, I didn't expect to be going this well in the group in any case. So to be where we are is obviously a wonderful position to be in. We're, we're surely, as Napoli take the lead in Benfica, we're surely going to get ourselves at least into the Europa League from here. Ball in. It's... Not going to play. And we're 1-0 down. Napoli's 2-0 up against Benfica. Um, and this is not working for us, is it? So let's let's try that and maybe that. And we'll spoil ourselves and push up a little bit as well. Um, it's just one goal. It's just one goal. But yeah, I do worry just ever so slightly. Not the best defending there. Who was that? It was Quinn. Um, looking a little bit nervous, a little bit anxious. Let's see if we can demand a little bit more from them. We've responded okay to going behind. Um, here we go with a free kick. The Armenian knocks it in. Decent. It's there for Gurke. Gurke hits the post. It's still there for the Armenian. Can he get a second ball in? It's tackled away. Still with the Armenian. There for Juan Me, and it's cleared away into touch. What a chance for Gurke, though. So, so unlucky. Let's give it a no-pressure shout here, perhaps. Um, can we put a bit of pressure on them high up the pitch? It's not typically the way that we've asked them to play, but you never know. Ball over the top. There's the high line coming back to hurt us. Lowry is in, and Lowry makes it 2-0. And I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this isn't working for us. That high line there certainly didn't work for us, did it? Um... We've told them no pressure already, so hopefully we'll get a response from that. But going 2-0 down, that does make it a little bit more difficult. It was, I think it was always going to be our most difficult game in the group away to Arsenal. And we've seen in the past, we've really, really struggled against Premier League teams. So, 
I, I, I'd love to say I'm surprised, but I'm not. We've got another free kick to defend here and almost a hat trick for Lurie. We just need to try and get the half time at this point, don't we? The deeper defensive line is not working. That was offside, was it? I think it was. Um, how offside was it? Yeah, they're all offside. They're a mile off. The whole team's off. Easy one, that. Uh, boys, let's just get the half time, please. And then we can have a little bit of a rethink about this. Um, yeah, so not great. That hasn't worked, has it? That hasn't worked. Uh, absolutely terrible, boys. We are going to have to, I think, change to wingers. Um, let me have a think about this, and I'll come back and run you through the changes. All right, so we are going to go with wingers. Uh, so the changes that we've made, Bono and Fomin have come on for Quinn and Gurke. We're dropping Tommy Williamson back into a Mazella role. Uh, basically, the reason I've done that is because Freshie is not having the best game. Uh, and I want to have the option of moving Williamson up top, and then we can bring Yamaguchi on if we need to to play as the Mazella. So that's the changes that we've made. Oh, let's hope. I mean, we can't be much worse, can we? We really, we really didn't play well that first half. Um, so hopefully a change of shape will help us along here. Uh, this is not the start we wanted. So we've got another free kick to defend, and that's off the crossbar as well. Uh, highlight isn't going to continue, no, as Ballerini gets that away let's uh let's give him a get creative if we can get one goal then we're you know we're back in the conversation freshy is still not having the best game can we get something from this of course if they do come out 4-4-2 again against us at our place we'll have a little lean wrexham anyway we'll have a, at least a better idea of exactly what we need to do having played them here as that is cleared away by one me and arsenal still have possession um I mean, what we don't want to do is get absolutely ripped to shreds here, mostly for confidence, but also there is a chance if it comes down to head-to-head -head between us and Arsenal, if we can you know, keep it to 2-0, maybe get back to 2-1, you know, at least have a sort of a constructive loss uh, that we could still be in a, uh, a chance of uh, overturning this. Are we defending? We need to defend a little bit more width there, I think. Um, here we go. Freshy over a free kick. Can we get something going here? We have looked good from set pieces so far this uh, Champions League group stage. Montgomery has that. He gets it infield there to Brewerton. Brewerton, what is that, mate? He's standing right there. How can you not see him? I think he's colorblind. Oh, and it's 3-0. It's a good finish from Leroux. That's a hat trick for him. He has been quite magnificent. But we have, we've, we've given them one there, haven't we? Um, maybe a little bit of a reality check here in the Champions League. We're not as good as we think we are, perhaps. Oh, that's a horrible pass from Brewerton. Unbelievable. It's the white shirts, mate, not the white shorts. Just clear up that confusion for you, hopefully. Uh, so LaRue is absolutely killing us. Jesus Christ, and no wonder. Look at that. Um, all right, Freshy is having a nightmare. Let's How's, uh, Williamson's not a midfielder, so let's make the change. Um, let's switch them, let's switch them, and what have I done? What an idiot, what an idiot. We want you on for you. Switch those two around, switch those two around, please, game, there we go. I mean, you can see there, we're anxious, we're frustrated. It's not, it's just not been a good trip to London for us. Can we get something back in this one? Something to cheer. Williamson and Brewerton. There's a good ball out for Bono. Can he get a cross in for Freshy? Last chance, mate. Oh, he's hit the post. We've hit the post twice in this game. On another day, despite the fact we've been ridiculously outplayed, on another day, this could have been a very, very different outcome. Tony with a header there, but to nobody. And LaRue is in, or Larie is in again. And again, he scored four goals. It's just the one guy, isn't it? It's one guy that has beaten us today. Calm down, boys. Come on. It's a massive, massive reality check. And we've we've come up against probably one of the best strikers in world football. And I, I expect Soltani to do a little bit better there, to be honest. But we still cannot get anywhere near the Premier League sides. And if we are to one day win the Champions League, that is obviously going to have to change. 
This is, of course, massively hurting our goal difference at this point as well. Uh, here we go with Lurie. He's not going to score again, is he? Jesus, boys, come on. Um, let's maybe just sit Brewerton in as a, as a halfback, just go three at the back. Uh, we've been thoroughly, thoroughly outplayed. And, well, at least we won the Iron Brew. Brewerton, does that hit the crossbar as well? Not quite as uh, as unlucky, that one. That's uh, just one of those, isn't it? But, yeah, I don't know. I'll have to have a complete rethink. If we are going to come up against a 4-4-2, is there exactly what we need to do to defend against that, against, or against this Arsenal team as well? Um... Because Lurie looks absolute class, doesn't he? I, I almost wonder if we need to just sit really deep, not give him space in behind, and... Yeah, I mean, they're just going over the top of us, aren't they? So, yeah, I mean, it's going it's to need a rethink, isn't it? Let's uh, try shooting on sight. Let's just go more direct. I think Big Mac's been a miss here as well. We we probably do miss not having him up top. Uh, but to be honest, I don't think I don't think it would have made too much of a difference. We were just thoroughly, thoroughly outplayed there. And as I said, it was one guy essentially that um, that just ripped us to shreds. So youthful Barlow Town come unstuck. It does appear that whatever the uh, under 19s do, we will follow them because uh, yeah, that was not great. That really, really wasn't good. Anyway, uh, the other game in the group, if you're wondering, uh, Benfica are uh, uh, shambles. Uh, Napoli's put five past them. So that is not great for goal difference in the group. Suddenly, uh, Arsenal looked the class of the field. Napoli's there with six points as well. And you've got to say, on the basis of that, we're not going to get anywhere near Arsenal. And it's going to come down to Napoli at home. We do have Napoli at home, Benfica away. Is that what we have coming up? Uh, the Benfica, the first game was away. Napoli was at home. So we've got to go Napoli away. So, yeah, we have Arsenal coming up home at next. That'll be next episode. Bengal City away, Arsenal at home. And we really do need to take at least a point off of Arsenal. Otherwise, we might find ourselves into the Europa League, despite the fact we've had a wonderful, wonderful start to the group stage. It's all fallen a little bit apart there, hasn't it? And that's it for today, though, guys. If you have enjoyed that, please do hit thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you next time. We'll look for a little bit of revenge against Arsenal, and we'll take on Bengal City in a local derby as well. Take care.